Hi, Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 5, the states of matter. And now we're going to focus on the subtopic of 5.4, the phase diagram. So in this video, you're going to learn about the idea of phase, triple point as well as the critical point. Also, you need to identify the triple point and the critical point on the phase diagram. Next, we're going to sketch the phase diagram of water as well as carbon dioxide. And we're also going to explain the anomalous behavior of the water on the phase diagram. Last but not least, we're going to describe the phase changes with respect to the temperature. So the change in temperature will allow it to happen at the constant pressure. So when one of the parameters changing, the other parameter is going to be kept constant. So when it happens at a constant pressure, then it is at a isobaric condition. Also, we're going to see the description for the phase change with respect to the change of the pressure. But it happens at the constant temperature. So when it happens at a constant temperature, then you are talking about the isothermal. Okay, so this learning outcome here, you will cover this in this video. So without any further ado, let us start. So, phase. So what is phase? So phase is basically a homogeneous part of a system that is in contact with the other part. For example, a solid, liquid, and gases. So as what you can see in the system here, let's say we, let's say if we have a mixture of gases, which is a combination of hydrogen gas and carbon dioxide, or you can see the air that surrounds you. So when the air surroundings you you cannot differentiate between one type of molecule with another. You cannot say that, oh, this is oxygen, oh, this is carbon dioxide, oh, oh this is nitrogen. You couldn't separate them together. What you can see that is that they exist as a mixture, as a homogeneous mixture, in which, in which they are will max, and, they can, and we cannot see the boundary between the gases. Kita tak nampak perbezaannya. And as a result, the number of phases for the for this situation is only one. Now we're going to look into the next system. For example, the two liquid that does not mix together. Let's say if you have a mix of oil as well as the water. So when you mix oil and water, you're going to see that it's going to be separated into two layers. And from that observation, you can see it clearly that this is one layer, this is another layer. And therefore, you can see that there's going to be a distinctive boundary between them. And for the number of faces here, going to be two, because you can see one and two here. Now, let's see if you have a system which consists of two liquids that are, that are will mix, for example, the alcohol and water. So alcohol will dissolve inside the water, and then as a result, it's going to be looking as a clear solution. So from your observation, you can only see as a one clear solution. You cannot see the separation. And as a result, you cannot see the boundary between the solution. So the number of phases here are going to be one. Now we're going to look into the phase diagram. So phase diagram is basically a pressure, temperature graph that shows the region of which the solid, liquid, and gaseous states of a substance can exist. So, let's say if we have an area or a region on the phase diagram. So, the region and the area representing one phase, satu fasa. Let's say if you have a region of A, T, and B, area sini. So, from here, you know that this region here belongs to a solid phase. If you have a region of B, T, and C, which is on this part here, then it is belong to the liquid phase. If you have the region of A, T, C here, then it is belong for the vapor phase. So the vapor phase is also known as the gaseous phase. The next point is the line. So the line, which is the line here, a, T, B, T, T, C, representing two phases that exist in equilibrium. For example, let's say if we have the line A, T. So A, T here. So 
on this above part you have the solid on the below part you have the vapor so when you reaches a point on the line here it means that it has a properties of a solid and then it has a properties of the vapor so exactly on this line here you can see that the vapor and the solid state are in equilibrium similarly for the other line for example tb here so when it refers to this region or anywhere on the line then it refers to the solid liquid in equilibrium for the tc similar thing gonna happen so it is in between liquid and vapor so it's gonna be liquid and vapor in equilibrium means that the two phases gonna coexist in equilibrium next we're gonna have a triple point so the triple point is labeled as the one in here which is a level t and it is connected with all the three lines so the triple point which is this point here is the point at which the three phases which is the solid the liquid as well as the gas or the vapor can coexist in equilibrium so this is the triple point the next point is the critical point so the critical point is located here so the critical point is where the liquid and the, vas the vapor or the gases could not be distinguished or identified so we can say that it is the point at which there is no boundary between the liquid phase as well as the gaseous phase All right so now we're going to look into the phase diagram of water so for the phase diagram of water you can see that at the pressure of 180 m and at 0 degrees celsius or 27273.15 kelvin we can see that it exists as a solid liquid in equilibrium meaning that it is in between ice and water okay and it happens at the normal boiling point located here and normal here as what you have learned before it refers to 180 m okay and for the phase diagram of water as what you can see here you can see that a difference is in between this line tb line so the tb line here shows that it has a negative slope where it is slanted to the left sebelah kiri and this diagram here is basically not typical they are anomalous sebabnya kebanyakan kebanyakan substance adalah ke arah kanan tetapi water adalah sebelah kiri why is that okay so this properties is unusual compared to another substance and this situation is being connected with the fact that ice is less dense than water okay so um, because we have learned that so ice it will floats on top of the water right so the solid gonna be on top of the liquid for the substance of water meanwhile for most of the substance in the world the solid will gonna be down and then the liquid gonna be upwards it's usually like this but for water it's gonna be the vice versa and as a result that is why the tb line or the normal melt or the melting line here is slanted to the left and that is why you can see that the melting point of ice or the freezing point of the liquid in the those direction so solid to liquid is a melting liquid to solid is a freezing so any point is okay and then you can see that the melting point gonna be decreases with an increase in pressure okay which is benda ini pelik lah okay so bila pressure meningkat so when you increase the increase the pressure to here for example from one you raise it up to 150 atm as what you can see here the temperature gonna goes down which is very unusual and this is due to the fact that ice is less than than water and that is why it is slanted to the left okay and now you can compare that with the phase diagram of carbon dioxide as what you can see here 
the phase diagram of the carbon dioxide is more typical. Okay, yang lebih biasa kita nampak, which is it's slanted to the right. Okay, and just to just to let you know that the carbon dioxide is usually denoted it as a gas at a normal condition, because when we look into the graph here, which is at twenty five degrees Celsius, which is the, which is referring to two eight two nine eight point one five Kelvin, which is at this position, and then twenty five twenty five degrees Celsius, which is two nine eight, and then one atm, which is here. So you can see that the carbon dioxide at room temperature is going to be existing as a gas. And that is why we usually see carbon dioxide is a gas in our normal daily life. Okay. And as I mentioned, the phase diagram of carbon dioxide is more typical, in which the line TB here refers to a right and it refers to the positive slopes. And this is more typical as what you can see here. When our pressure increases, daripada 5.2, kita pergi maybe kepada 60 atm, that's what we can see, the temperature will also increases. Dia tidak macam water. Okay? And this is connected with the fact that solid carbon dioxide is denser than the liquid carbon dioxide. Okay? Macam saya cerita tadi lah. Kebanyakan solid, biasanya dia akan lebih dense daripada liquid dia. Tetapi kalau water dia terbalik. Okay? And as what you can see here, a uh, triple point is the is above the atmospheric pressure which is at the pressure of 5.2 atm and then at the temperature of 216.15 kelvin. So the triple point is located here. And it is why you gonna find it very very difficult to get the liquid carbon dioxide. Pasal liquid carbon dioxide can only exist above the 5.2 atm. Okay, padahal dekat persekitaran kita hanya 1 atm. And that is why it's very very difficult to see carbon dioxide in the liquid form. What's more common is a solid carbon dioxide or known as the dry ice. So, bila kita ada solid carbon dioxide and we, we put it in our room temperature, it's going to be converted quickly into a vapor because it reaches to this point here. Okay? And that is why solid will go directly into a vapor without passing through the liquid. So it's going to be stably, undergo sub, the process of sublimation. Now, we're going to look into the example which is analyzing the phase diagram. So given is a phase diagram for the mysterious compound X. So at what temperature and pressure will all the three phases coexist? So this condition here refers to a triple point. So the triple point occurs at this point here, in which it has roughly around 50 atm, and then at the temperature of 350 degrees Celsius. Okay, and then the second question, what is the critical temperature for the compound X? So critical temperature here refers to the critical point. So the critical point is the point at which liquid and gas couldn't be distinguished. So it is at this region here. Okay, but here it just wanted the temperature. So what you're going to do is you're just going to look down and make a straight line and roughly you can get it around 770 degrees Celsius. Okay, and for the third question, if a bottle of compound X, okay, at the pressure of 45 atm, okay, and then at the temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. So let's say if you have a compound X at 45 degree, at 45 atm and 100 degrees Celsius, which is at the start, it is in the solid state. And then when you heat it to 400 degrees Celsius, what's going to happen? So when you heat it up to 400 degrees Celsius, you can see that the solid will turn into gas, right? So it will go from solid, solid gas equilibrium, and then it's going to become a gas. Okay, so you can see that the X changes from solid to gas. 
and it will undergo the process of sublimation. And then for the fourth question, if you wanted to, could you drink compound X? Okay, kalau kamu mau, kamu boleh tak drink compound X secara logiknya. So, drink ni maksudnya kita nak minum lah dan dia adalah dalam bentuk liquid. So, logically speaking, if it is in the liquid phase, we need to have the pressure of more than 50 degrees Celsius and then the temperature need to be more than 350 degrees Celsius. So, if you were to think that, if we were to drink something at 350 degrees Celsius, it is very, very ir illogical to do so. And it is, it is very, very difficult to get to, the, to that high temperature. So, the answer is obviously no. And because at that temperature and pressure, which is at the very high range, we will probably die from drinking the mysterious compound X. All right. Now, for example, number two, we need to state the changes in phase when a sample Z is heated at a constant pressure, which is a sobaric process, from point P until, from, until point S is reached. For question number B, uh, state the, the changes in phase when a sample Z subjected to a pressure change. Okay, pressure yang berubah, tetapi temperature dia adalah constant which is the isothermal process from point P to point Y. So to understand A, let us look into the drawing here. So it goes from P to S, right? So we're going to make a line there. And then we can label it at, as a isobaric condition, which is dia berlaku dekat constant pressure. So pressure adalah constant. Yang berubah adalah temperature. Okay, so we're going to label this situation as situation A. For situation B, it is subjected to pressure change, perubahan tekanan. But then the temperature are kept constant, which is isothermal. So from P to Y, it happens at a constant temperature and what changes here is the pressure. So let us look into on how we can answer 2A first. So for situation 2A, which is labeled in the turquoise color here, first you can see that at point P, the sample Z exists as a solid because it is located at the solid region. And then, at the, as the temperature reaches W, you can see that it reaches to the triple point. Okay, so at the triple point, you can say that all the three phases coexist in equilibrium, which is the solid, liquid, as well as the vapor. And then, as more heat is being applied, the substance Z changes um, to form a liquid at point Q and then it gonna boils again at point R in which at R it gonna have a liquid vapor equilibrium and then when more heat is being applied all the liquid is successfully converted to vapor at point S Okay, and this is how you mention the phase change at each points one by one. And then for situation B, similar thing. So you can sit, you can start from point P here. So at point P, which is at 0 0.006038 atm, and at 211 Kelvin, that exists as a solid at point P. And then when it reaches point X, Z started to melt and then the solid liquid coexists in equilibrium because it is located on the line here, on the melting line. And then when more pressure is being applied, the Z will be entirely in the liquid phase, okay, until it reaches point Y. Alright, so I think that's all for this video. See you again some other time. Bye.